You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for your support of The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. We're talking about one of my favorite things today, and it does have to do with hymnody, so it fits. It is the Easter vigil service that we get uh, the Saturday night before Easter morning, and it is probably, it is, I think, my favorite service of the whole year. And we get to talk about that today, dig in a little bit to it, um, especially if you're not familiar with Easter vigil. This will be a very fun conversation to learn more about this service and where it fits into our Holy Week services and why it is such a unique service in our church year. Joining us to talk about that today is the Reverend Chris Hull, pastor, senior pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, and also Linnea Sander Cantor at Zion Lutheran in Tomball. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Coffee Hour. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. <laughs> this is going to be uh, an exciting conversation about an exciting service. So first of all, let's let's uh, get a little background on this service, especially if people are unfamiliar with a vigil or have never even heard of an Easter vigil in our Lutheran tradition. Where does this service fit into the series of Holy Week services that we're familiar with? So this is for Holy Saturday, which is, of course, the day before Easter Sunday um, in the evening close to sunset as possible, typically. So it comes from the, the ancient church would hold vigils where they would just sit up all night and pray and read um, in the expectation of the coming of Christ. Um, and this vigil very quickly became the most important vigil in the church year. And it goes all the way back to the mid second century. Um, so this was actually how they, how the early Christians celebrated Easter. They didn't have Easter Sunday services. They had the vigil. That was like the highlight. That was the whole shebang was vig- just vigil. And so they didn't have Monday, Thursday. They didn't have Good Friday. They just had vigil. And they celebrated the whole story in that service. Um, and then in the morning, boom, it's Easter. Celebrate the sacrament. It's fun times. Mm-hmm. Um So they held this vigil, keeping watch, you know, for the coming of Christ all night. And it would end just before dawn with the sacrament um, because the ancient tradition is that Christ rose during the night because, you know, the women get there at daybreak and he's already risen. Um, So it didn't go all the way to sunrise. By the late fourth century, the Christians began separating out the celebration over the course of the week. So they would have to celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper on Monday, Thursday, and then the death on Good Friday, and then the vigil would be the culmination of the week and the official celebration of Easter. Um, In the 7th century, the Roman church introduced the Easter Sunday service, and it sort of took over as the main Easter service and vigil subsequently declined after that. Um, In the 1950s, the whole liturgical renewal movement uh, basically brought it back. And so it's gotten a lot more popular since then. It's included in the Lutheran service book, altar book. So we do have that. Um, service outlined for us for LCMS churches. Um, and that's basically how it got started. Wow. I know. And I I love Easter Vigil and I thought I knew quite a bit about it, but apparently <laughs> the more you learn, the more you realize you have more questions about it. Um, so, so who wants to walk us through um, what an Easter Vigil service looks like? What's the, the flow of the service? I guess that can be me. Fun times. Buckle up, everybody. We're <laughs> going to go through the vigil. This is that. It's the ending of that. How do you say it? The trid, tridum, tridum. tridum. The three services, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, now the Easter vigil. So you gather round outside as the sun is going down. You have everybody around. And at Zion, we've built up every year. First year was only like 15 people, then 30. So this year, because we didn't get it last year, we'll have at least 500 people. Um, (laughs) but you gather outside and you have this invitation, you know, we gather on this holy night. So it has kind of like that Christmas Eve feel as well. And you gather around this fire outside and there you have the pastors are vested in black. They have the black chasuble, the black stoles, and you have the bonfire there and the Paschal candle. And the celebrant then traces the Paschal candle, the cross, the Alpha and the Omega, the year, the nails and everything. And you have the Paschal candle is then lit. And from there, you light everybody else's candle off of that candle. 
and you process into a dark nave. You don't process into a lit area, but a dark one. You sing the Lux Christi, light of Christ. And it's always good to have a guy. I mean, it's good. I mean, you don't have to be able to, but it's good if your pastor can carry a tune in a bucket (laughs) for Easter vigil. It's a good thing. And uh, at Zion, we're blessed with at least one of us has that. Oh, I know. I'm good. Thank you. I was fishing. (laughs) Thank you. But both of us, and you, you have this chanting, the light of Christ, as everybody processes into the nave and up into the sanctuary. And then you go through this beautiful liturgy of the ex- exultet and the proper preface. And then it's beautiful tones. And then you get into this awesome. And then everyone extinguishes their candles except for that one kid, usually a pastor's kid that doesn't want to listen. It's like, I'm going to burn this place down. Okay, let's make sure the insurance is good first. But then you go into this lovely service of the readings and – it's almost like grandpa's telling you to gather around and sit down and hear the story of our people, you know, and you, you start with Genesis one through two, the creation account. Then you have the flood. Then you have the testing of Abraham, Genesis 22. You have the Israel's deliverance through the Red Sea. And then um, I love, then you get the Isaiah 55, salvation is offered freely. The Ezekiel 20, not 26, 36, right? Mm -hmm. 36, oh, okay. A new heart, a new spirit. You have the Deuteronomy 31. And then you get the Ezekiel 37, the dry bones. I love the dry bones. And then as you keep going through the readings, it's like this buildup. Then you get Job 19, so you're getting more Easter. You get the Jonah 3, you get the Zephaniah 3, and then finally you get that lovely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from Daniel. And it's just awesome stuff. And from the service of the word, you then flow into the service of baptism because – did you mention this, no? Just now? I didn't actually in the, my history. I yeah. forgot all about Vi- that. Vigil. Well, go Vigil ahead. Vigil was ahead. originally the time where well, the catechumens would be catechized over the course of Lent. Right. And then at the vigil service, and this goes back to the original vigil services, they would baptize the catechumens. And these were mostly adult converts back then. And so this was their initiation into the church was vigil. And then they would celebrate the Easter Eucharist with the whole church. And they were just like officially, you know, God's people. And so the service of baptism is a part of the Easter vigil service, and it's still in there. We do it as a remembrance. Um, But back then, they were actually baptizing adults at this service and inducting them into the church. So it's really cool. It is. Baptism is pretty cool. I like it. (laughs) We'll keep it around. But then after that, you get the service of the word. The pastor declares the word name that must not be named the word you can't say for 40 days because we're told not to. He gets to say that word, and I'm the liturgist celebrant this year, so I get to say it. And then you have the changing of the pyramids. You go from the black to the white. You go from the somber, the that that just gruesome type stuff to the jubilant. This and is it's my beautiful. Favorite. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. it's everybody's favorite part. But I have this yes. one. <laughs> I mean, you're just you're going, and I actually get all amped it's like up. It's like, coming. It's coming. Through, you know, we're going through the litany of the resurrection. <laughs> you know, and I love the litany to begin with, and then the litany of the resurrection is just really awesome. awesome. And you're talking about you know the the Easter narrative in the litany, and it just you get to the end, and I'm just getting so psyched. I can't wait to play that, <laughs> you know, that awesome festive mm-hmm. Easter hymn. Mm-hmm. And so then you know, Pastor Hall drops the A-bomb and the lights come on and, and they just, and they start changing the pyramids and changing their vestments. And then I remember specifically one year, I think this was like two or three years ago. Um, I, we play, we do now all the vault of heaven resounds at Zion. Typically you would do a hymn of praise like the Gloria or this is the feast, but we like now all the vault. So we do now all the vault. And I remember I start playing it and I've got it memorized and I'm just so excited. And I happened to look out of the corner of my eye downstairs to the sanctuary. And I saw, I just at that moment, Pastor Hull whipped the veil off the crucifix and I just started bawling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really good thing I had that him memorized because I was, I was just the, the emotional impact of the moment after all of the buildup of the service and you get to Easter and it's just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It's and I, I, I unveil pyramids dramatically. He That's does. the only way you like, can. Shoo. Some pastors, <laughs> it's a very somber occasion. Me, no. This is I mean, that's why they don't put a veil on the big cross. They're afraid I'll probably rip it down. 
But then from there, you have the sermon, and it's that Easter morning sermon. You have that Mark 16. That is right. Mark 16 is the text. That's all good. I remember some things. Mark 16. And then from there, you go into the service of the sacrament, which I mean, is basically, you know, just average stuff. Um, but then you close with, of course, what well, I would say the second best Easter hymn. Christ Jesus lay in death strong bands here. Yeah. I would say Gerhardt's is the best one. We'll Awake my heart with gladness. <laughs> but um, that's, we'll see that the next morning. But everyone that comes to it, they walk out going, man, I wish I had been going to that my whole life. It is just the best service ever. And it is. Mm-hmm. It is. I I would agree with uh, all of <laughs> all of that. <laughs> the service is, is just, it is so full of, of all of these things, it's it's the it's like the entire church here, kind of just like jam packed into this, uh, what two and a half hour, three hour service? How long is is your service typically? Depends Actually. on who chants and who reads. <laughs> uh, when I chant and read, it's usually about forty five minutes. No. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's hour. about an hour and a half. Yeah. But when Pastor Daniels, he's a little more pious than I am, <laughs> so we're here for a good two two and a half hours no. then. So Not quite that long. no, but a little long. Usually but usually an hour, hour and a half to two, two hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of the readings and all of all of the hymns and the music, and we have. Uh, a lot more to talk about about Easter Vigil, but we're going to take a quick break before I ask you another question. Otherwise, we'll, we won't get a break. So <laughs> we, we need to take a quick break. Uh, we're talking with the Reverend Chris Hall and Linnea Sander from Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, about Easter Vigil. And we'll have more in just a minute. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. We're talking about the Easter Vigil and having maybe a little bit too much fun with it, but it is Easter Vigil, so I'm not sure that there is a limit on uh, how awesome this conversation is. We're talking with the Reverend Chris Hall and Linnea Sander from Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, about the flow of this service and how it is so different from all of the rest of our services during the church year. So uh, one, who wants to uh, tell us what makes this service so unique? And we've talked through the parts of the service, um, but why is this service uh, so different and so unique uh, from the rest of the services that we experience during the church year? I mean, it just, it summarizes everything. You said that right before the break, you have this whole church year condensed into one night. But what I love about it is it's the whole spectrum of what you're experiencing. I know we as Lutherans, we hate talking about feelings because we're all (laughs) German. I'm not German, but everyone else is. And they get all like, I'm stoic. No, you're not. I've seen you at the at the Wendy's and the Chick-fil-A when they include an extra fry, you get excited (laughs) sometimes, you know, but the reality is with the vigil, you go from death to life. It's, it's literally this death and resurrection in an entire, and I know we get that in Sunday morning, but here the liturgy just unfolds it for you. I mean, the sermon is great. It's needed, but you almost don't even have to have one. I mean, not, Oh, pastor Hall said he hates sermons. No, I don't. I love sermons, (laughs) but the reality is with this, it's just, it's hard to preach this service. I tell Pastor Daniels that I'm glad he's preaching because this is a hard one to live up to. You have these beautiful narratives of scripture. You have the liturgy, you have the lights. But what I love about it is kind of like what Linnea mentioned as we started is you have this vigil of waiting for Christ and then he shows up. Not only does he show up In the words we're saying, he's there bodily in the sacrament. He's there in the hymnody. He's there in all of this. And it's just wonderful. Um, That's at least how I see it as a little different. It's like a Sunday morning on steroids. It's just wonderful. (laughs) Except without the rage and all that. Well, there's rage, I guess, you know. 
like a, you know, a righteous, holy, righteous, holy joyful sinner. rage. Joyful rage. <laughs> Lene, is there anything musically about this service or anything that uh, you really love to get to sing or play at uh, Easter Vigil? Uh, well, like I, I mentioned earlier before the break, the, that we do now all the vault as the mm. hymn of praise when we get to the Easter. And I just, I don't, that just for me, I don't, I think it has to do with just my sort of early childhood memories. That's one of the hymn tunes that I remember most early in my life. And so it, it has that emotional connection, you know, the nostalgia factor. Uh, but just the, um, we don't do a whole lot of hymns in our Easter Vigil service. There is the option to do quite a few of the Old Testament canticles in between the readings. And um, eventually I'd like to do that. That'd be pretty cool. Drag my choir to Easter Vigil. And maybe I like help that. Me out. Um, they would come joyfully. They, well, they do come anyway. They're already there. Yes. But you can do these Old Testament canticles that are in the back of the Lutheran service book, and some of them are only available in the accompaniment edition. Um, but you can do the Song of Jonah. You can do the, um, the what is it, the Song of the Young Men, the Shadrach, Meshach, mm -hmm. and Bendigo. You can do that one. So those are really awesome when they get included. Um, I also just particularly wanted to highlight the Exalted and the Proper Preface. Because the exalted, first of all, the, the chant tone for that is just beautiful. And the text is amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't get to play it or sing it, but my pastors do. So <laughs> I got to start practicing It's still musical. That. You do got to practice. I got to start practicing But that. the proper preface is one of my favorite things. And like my favorite part of my favorite service almost. <laughs> it just, this is the night when Christ the life mm -hmm. arose from the dead. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love, it, could, it repeats itself. You know, how holy is this night when all wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away? How holy is this night when innocence is restored to the fallen and joy is given to those downcast? How blessed is the night when man is reconciled to God in Christ? It's just the most beautiful language, the ancient language. And I just love all of that. And the chant tones, again, it's it's based on the typical proper preface chant tone, but it, it gets to do a little bit of extra fun stuff. <laughs> um, and it's just lovely. It just sets the service off right there from the beginning. And it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you mentioned that the number of people attending at Zion, attending the uh, the annual Easter vigil, is uh, constantly increasing what about the the spectrum of ages? How is the whole mm. family engaged? How are you know thinking particularly of of youngins? Um, how are they engaged in uh, the? How do they see the vigil? Well, what we do is we send them the children's church first, so they're actually not. I'm kidding. I'm joking. That was a show. No, no. They love the why candles. it's awesome. They're like, we can't have this guy on. We have to edit him. You don't know what he's going to say. But no, this is the reality. This is children's church. That's why I love that text with Jesus. He takes the little child and puts him in the midst of the disciples and says, "Here you go, the one who can't even talk yet. This is what you need to be like." And what did Luther call the child? Herr Doctor. You know, you are the doctor of liberation, dear child. I should listen to you. And it's amazing at Zion. We have three services a week, usually, well, all the time, Sunday, then Wednesday, then Saturday. And some of the services, the children outnumber the adults, <laughs> which is awesome. You'll have like 39, 45 people. And out of that, about 30 of them are children. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. And when you look at the vigil, what I love about it is it touches every single sense. One thing we didn't mention, we also do at Zion, is this is one of the main days you use incense as well. You actually, now I don't have, when I'm the liturgist celebrant, we don't have them sense the celebrant because I don't trust my associate pastor <laughs> to do it properly and not hit me in the face with it. But you can do it beforehand. So when you walk in, you have that that smell. The church smell. The frankincense <laughs> You have that smell. Then you have the sight. You have the vestments, the pyramids, the lights. You have the sound, the lux Christi. You have the, well, taste. Well, with the sacrament, you get the taste. And sometimes if the incense is powerful enough, it does leave a little taste in the mouth. <laughs> but the reality is we have the whole spectrum. We have little babies. We have people. I know one of our members, her name's Donna Limmer. She's excited for it this year. She's jacked. She's pumped. Um. I mean, we have people in their 60s. We have people in their 20s. We have little bitty babies that are uh, two months old. And they all participate and rejoice in it. And it's so fun. 
it, it's just great. I was going to mention it before you asked this question. The joy of bringing your kids to a two hour long service. <laughs> I mean, think about it. I took my sons to see Avengers Endgame, which is like a three hour movie. And they're cool because Tony Stark's, hopefully I'm not ruining it for anybody, but you're <laughs> waiting for the snap and, you know, he beat uh, Thanos. And that's kind of like the the alleluia. Oh, no, I said it. It's <gasps> okay. Guess what? Mom. You can. You can even go eat <laughs> butter later if you want. But the reality is you say it and that's the snap. That's, it's here. Yeah, that's what Jesus, I mean. it's, it's, it's done. I was talking to my kids about <clears throat> Holy Week and we were discussing the various, what was going to go on on each day. And I said, and then we get to do vigil. And my son was like, and we get to say the A-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great. So you bring, bring your kids to it. Bring your, I, I'd say all the time, heaven's going to be filled with children singing and praying. This past Sunday, my daughter was responding to my sermon as I preached. That's what you're going to get at the vigil. You're going to have children singing the stuff and rejoicing. Like the hymn we sing to begin the service of baptism is God's own child, I gladly say it. Mm -hmm. And we sing that hymn at every baptism here at Zion. So there's not many kids here that don't have that hymn memorized. Mm -hmm. That That's their hymn. They love belting it out. Mm -hmm. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is p- quite possibly the one service of the year that is is it is this full immersion experience of of you get all of those senses. You have the incense. You have fire at the beginning. Like what other service do you get to have a bonfire at the beginning? <laughs> you have all of the hymns, and you get the baptism and the stories. And and that and Linnea, I think you're right that 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 moment when everything changes from darkness into light is probably everyone's favorite. I know it's my favorite part of the whole service. It is. <laughs> It gives me chills every year because mm-hmm. it's 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 a very visceral understanding of what we're actually doing during Holy Week and when when we come from Holy Week into Easter. It's it's amazing. And I want to ask you this question uh, because this is some some pushback that I've heard from other people. Does this celebrating Easter Vigil on Saturday night take away from what most people come to love Easter morning of that joyous uh, expression of of Easter morning does does it take away at all when you get to do it Saturday night a little early of course it does I mean Easter doesn't <laughs> matter anymore it's terrible I don't want to show up I don't know no. it's like it it's not. like if you asked me Pastor Hall and I said well yes um does it make you love your wife less when you give her a kiss goodnight and see her go to bed and then the next morning wake up and see her again? Well, yeah, I think she's ugly and detestable in the morning. No, of course not. That's ridiculous. That's silly. And anyone says, that's like, oh, you silly goose. There's never enough resurrection. There's never enough Jesus. There's never enough joy. There's always more to have. So we leave Saturday night. We go home. We do our devotion. We go to bed. We wake up bright and early the next morning and say, guess what? What? We get to go to church and hear it again. We're not going to hell when we die. We're going to heaven. And Jesus already went there and made our bed for us. It's awesome. And it's a reality of how we've lost this liturgical life. It's not just an hour on Sunday morning. It sets my entire existence. It sets everything about me as my liturgical life. And as we get closer to that, back to that, we then see it. The further f- further away I am from it, the the darker my existence is. I, I get frustrated. I, get, I mean, we, we avoid talking this way, but this is the reality is when we have more of it, We are blessed in this life, blessed in a way that is heavenly, not necessarily like a prosperity gospel-y way, but blessed in a way that we bear our crosses knowing there is joy beyond all comprehension waiting for us. And it's awesome stuff. Yeah. Just as from a cantor's perspective, I don't, I have lost, I actually think it enhanced my joy on Easter Sunday, just from the aspect of the work of it. Um, We already you know, said the word and and did the thing and got the sacrament on Saturday night. And so I go into Sunday morning and I'm just raring to go. I'm ready. I'm, I'm less nervous. I'm less keyed up. You know, we've already had a taste, a foretaste. And then Sunday morning, of course, is all the bells and whistles and the, you know, the brass and the other instruments Mm -hmm. and the choir and the whole nine yards. So, um, it didn't, it has not, it only increased my joy over the years. Mm Mm-hmm. With just about a minute left, Pastor Hull, anything else you'd like to add about <laughs> Easter Vigil as we prepare? Maybe what we could do to prepare for Easter Vigil. 
I would say one of the best things to do to prepare for it is one, go to the Monday, Thursday, go to the Good Friday and rejoice in it. It's when Christ bids us come to him. He's not bidding us come to him to be burdened more. He's bidding us come to him to be relieved. So we go to those services today, tomorrow and Wednesday. Meditate on those things Christ is doing during Holy Week. Um, I know this sounds silly. Well, maybe it doesn't sound silly. Watch good movies about it. You know, tune into things like that. Read Luther's Easter sermons. Read these things. Soak it up. This is our week. I mean, this is our time. This is the time to really dive into it and immerse yourself in it. And uh, just rejoice that you have brothers and sisters in Christ, not just at your congregation, but throughout our whole synod that also delight in these things. I mean, we're talking right now about it, that we rejoice in this beautiful evening, this great feast where we get to be told yet again, our Lord loves us so very much. And he does all this for us that we may live with him forever. It's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. I'm so excited for Easter Vigil, the best service of the whole year. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today to talk us through the service and all of the great parts of this service and uh, what makes it such a great thing to experience. Hopefully, a lot of our listeners will be able to go this year after not being able to attend the services in person at all last year. This year is the year to go to one or find one uh, online. I know several churches will be streaming these online. So even if you're not quite ready to like sit through a, church, a service for two hours, there are plenty of, of ch churches who will be uh, streaming this online so you can at least uh, watch it and, and get a taste of what the service is. Uh, Pastor Chris Hall and Linnea Sander from Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Coffee Hour. Thank you. It was fun times. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.